Hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sonia J. And if you're new, welcome. I can't do a full out right now. I'm kind of eating. I know it's ratchet, but I'm hungry and it's early in the morning. I haven't had breakfast yet. So I'm just now watching the episode. I was tired last night. We're going to get into it tonight. A lot of things to talk about. You know, let's just get into it. So the episode starts out with Brianna. And basically, we realize right away when the show, ep the episode starts, that Brianna is starting to have second thoughts. She's regretting her decision. She's regretting moving too fast into allowing him, well, and wanting to being with him so quickly and, and taking the relationship to such a serious level. And then two, moving all the way out here with him. Um, you know... It's just like, I guess as the days go on, she's realizing it more and more. And then she talks to her sister about it and tells her sister like, hey, I feel like I might have jumped the gun. And, you know, I think I'm, I moved too quickly into being with him, not even getting over my last relationship. And, and she also said that she feels like he's not motivated. And I feel like that's a big factor also into why she feels that way. Sorry, I'm hungry as hell, as hell, and I have a busy day. This is the only time I could do this video, sorry. You know, I guess she feels like he's not motivated. You know, they're supposed to all be looking for jobs. He hasn't gotten his GED yet. And I guess he's not doing that. Um, he keeps saying he's gonna do it, but then he pushes it off. So, and that's pissing her off on top of feeling like we rush things and you know and so she tells her sister and then you know she has a talk with him and like basically you can tell she wants to break up with him but she's trying to be nice so she's kind of trying to give him a chance to realize it on his own Um, even she says, like, I really love, I really care about you. You caught that when she said that and then she paused right before she was going to finish the word love. And she was like, I really care about you. That lets you know right there that she doesn't really love him, obviously. I mean, we all kind of seen that. And she's at the point where she just wants him to realize where she stands so that he can get it together and go. That's basically where she's at with it. But she's just kind of slowly trying to figure it out. Um, I mean, I'm sure we all knew that this move was a mistake for them to do. And we all, I'm sure, knew that she jumps in this relationship too quickly. But I am glad she's realizing it before it goes too far. And hopefully next time she starts dating that she doesn't take things too seriously you know Ooh, excuse me so next we have kayla and so she she found a job which is great i'm happy for her it's like a part-time job at like some makeup store or something um we also see that you know she's starting to feel a little bit better after the incident she's just trying to pick herself back up get a job like she has and now she's talking to her friend Devin about looking into getting apartments together so that they can, you know, get their own space. They're both adults. Well, young adults, but Kayla has a child. So, you know, I understand why she's trying to do that. And so, you know, that's what she's doing. While she's working, just started her new job, trying to figure things out, her next move. Uh, Stefan goes to Florida to visit his mom. Um, I guess we learned that she lives out there because she has lupus, so it's better for her and healthier for her to live out there with the warmer climate. So he and Stefan decided to stay out there because he thought he was wrong. So he goes back to visit his mom after the incident and his mom and him have a talk, you know, and his, everything his mom was saying was right. Like, you know, I, you know, at the same time, there's only so much you can do, you know, some may look at it and be like, she could have went harder on him. She should have yelled at him more, got it into his head more. 
But at the same time, I'm sure she's looking at it like this is my son and I don't want to beat up on him. I haven't seen him in years and I love him. And I want him to know that even though he fucked up, he's still a good person and that he can move on from this and do better. So, excuse me. I mean, you can argue she could have went harder, but you can also argue that what she did was right. So I'm not mad at what she said. I was here and understood what she was coming from and teaching him. And, you know, I think he really felt it when she told him, like, you, I'm not a man, so I can't teach you how to be a man. But you're a man and you have a son that you're going to have to teach how to be a man. And I think he really felt that when she said that. And I hope he feels it and actually does something about it and get it. My only thing is, and this is probably what I would have said if this was my child or something, my son. Like when he was saying how, you know, like he plans on changing and stuff. My only thing is like when people say they plan on changing, it's like how though? You can't just keep saying, I'm going to change, I'm going to do better, I'm going to change, I'm going to do better. That's great and I'm happy you have the mindset too, but you have to actually put work into doing it. Like how are you going to change? Are you going to get help? Like, it's one thing if it's something you can't control. There's certain things you people do, habits people have that you can change on your own. Yeah. But when it comes to physical abuse, when you're physically abusing other people, that when you get mad about stuff, regardless if it's big or small to you, when you get mad about stuff and you physically hurt other people, that you're, especially people that you're supposed to love, you can't help yourself on your own. That's not something you can just get, I can change on my own. You can't just change on your own. When you once you start becoming abusive to other people physically, especially your spouse or people you say you love and care about, you can't just change that on your own. You have to actually go get professional help. I'm not. Uh, that's just the truth. Sorry, that's the truth. You can't. Like if that was the case, you wouldn't have did it in the first place. Like if you were able to control yourself and change, you wouldn't have physically got that far and beat the shit out of her in the first place. You couldn't control yourself in that manner. So. The reason why is because you need help. So you got to get professional help before you can change that. You know, that's just the truth. Like, I mean, only way I can see you saying like, unless you were like incoherent at the time, like you were on something. But then again, it's like, well, if that's the case, well, then you need help to not be on nothing. So you don't do that again. You know what I'm saying? So like, I just, yeah, he says he's going to change and that's great. But I feel like he's at the point where he needs more than just, I say I'm going to change. He actually needs professional help. Not saying like he's crazy or nothing like that, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with going to a counselor or a therapist. I feel like he needs that because like his mom says, he has built up anger. And with her even saying that confirms when you have built up anger, you do stuff that you don't even think you're going to do, especially when it's to a point where you need professional help. And that's where he's at. And he, she confirmed it herself. He has built up anger and we see what he can do when he has built up anger. So I think he needs more than that help than than the help of himself he needs professional and um but it's good that she did talk to him i hope he does listen to what she's saying and actually get professional help um kayla decides to tell her mom that she plans on looking for apartments with Devin, and her mom i don't think her mom was upset with her the fact that she wants to move out i think she's more so just trying to like get her to realize like okay well this is what you need to realize like i mean because that's just what parents do. And I know it seems like it's annoying and they're nagging us at the time. But they have to make sure we're good. So I got to ask questions and stuff. Sorry, hold on. <clears throat> and so, Kayla gets mad because I guess the deal is... While Kayla's living there... Her mom is helping her, um, I guess, pay. I think she's paying for her car note or her car insurance and her phone bill or something like that. So she helps pay for that while she's living there. And I guess Kayla was upset because the mom said she wasn't going to pay for that no more once she moved out. And she felt like that was messed up. Okay, well, this is what I'm going to say about that. Um, your mom's right. I'm sorry. Your mom's right. She doesn't have to help you. Once you decide that I want to be an adult and I want to move out and be my own person, no, yeah, she doesn't need to help you. She doesn't have to help you. If she helps you, that's nice of her to even do. The fact that she's even helping you, helping you is nice because a lot of parents be washing their hands from their kids once they turn a certain age, especially, especially if their kids starts having babies. Oh, a lot of parents would be like, okay, you think you're grown? Whether it's right or wrong, that's what a lot of people do. And so the fact that her mom even pays for any bill for her 
is nice and it's it's cool you know so it's like you can't expect her to do that for the rest of your life and i'm not thinking she thinks that but at the same time it's like you should know kayla when you say i want to be independent and move out you can't expect your mom to still pay your bills like and it's not even like she's rich like but you know she's gonna think that let her think that she's young she'll get it one day when she, her son grows up and she realizes how hard she has to bust her ass to take care of her son she'll realize what her mom's saying makes sense like no i'm not gonna still support your bills pay for your bills if you live on your own and you're, you want to be grown now so her mom's right she got upset though when her mom brought up the fact that Stefan doesn't pay for anything so why do you expect me to continue to pay your bills when you move out her mom's right too but of course Kayla gets upset because Stefan's this sub uh sore subject for her and also Stefan and the mom don't get along so she automatically feels like whenever her mom brings up Stefan she's trying to be negative and it's like, I understand why Kayla takes it negatively like that because she has her own emotions and her own reason why she feels the way she feels. But outside looking in, bigger picture, your mom's right. Okay. You expect your mom to pay, help you, help pay your bills still. And the man who helped you create that baby ain't paid for shit. You should be getting on his ass, not me. You're lucky I'm even still paying for the bills now. Mom's right. But Kayla will learn. That's all I gotta say about that. We're gonna move on. All right, so Lexi's mom has another talk with her again about how she feels like Lexi's not assertive enough and she allows Tyler to walk all over her and she always caters and does what Tyler wants to do, whether it's as small as going to his house every night and never coming over hers or, you know, whenever they want to do something, it's always Tyler who gets to pick, like, you know, and of course Lexi gets annoyed as, you know, she she would do as teenage girls do when their mom gives them advice and stuff and um but once again she knows her mom's right just like last week and it's always going to be this this way especially when it's with this with tyler i should say your mom's right <laughs> she knows what she's talking about i mean i think all parents know what they're talking about when it comes to experiencing certain things not in every situation and not all the time but in this case Lexi's mom's right everything she's saying is spot on and how you know what she's saying is right and spot on because even though Lexi gets annoyed in the moment the next day you see in the confessional Lexi says even though it annoyed me that my mom said that what she say my mom's right I do think blase blase she knows her mom's right it's just hard to hear and it's like that with anybody so I get it and with, you know, her mom saying what she said, she realized it and had a talk with Tyler the next day. You know, asking him, like, what's your problem? Why don't you ever want to come over? Like, you know, whatever. And Tyler gives the same answer excuse he always does. Just sits there and barely says anything and barely gives his reasons, but expects it to be good enough. And then tells Lexi she has a bad attitude and that she's annoying. And then the argument is really over before it starts because... They both are so annoyed with each other and can't communicate with each other that they can't even argue. Their communication is so bad that they can't even argue. That's how you know you don't have good communication relationship. You can't even argue because you can't even communicate how mad you are. Like, come on. Y'all can't even argue. That's how bad the communication is. So anyways, so that ends. And then, you know, I guess Lexi's mom is fed up at this point. She talks to her husband like, you know, I just feel like... <clears throat> Tyler is purposely trying to stay away from us. He doesn't like us for some reason. He's basically saying, like, forget you guys. I don't want to be connected. And they're just looking at it like, well, I don't understand why he's acting like this. Like, we've been there for both of them. We accepted him. We helped him when he needed it. Um, we didn't have to be so kind and allow you guys to even have a, a relationship like you do. Hence, now you got a baby. Um, so it's like they feel like it's a slap in the face. They don't understand the disrespect and they feel disrespected. And I understand where they're coming from. I do get it. Um, but at the same time, I'm just like, how I look at it and I feel like how they should look at it is like, it's not really personal. Like, it is to some extent because he he does not want to be around them. So it does feel like it's personal. But get me, it's not personal. Because the bigger scheme of things is, it's not that Tyler hates Lexi's parents. It's Tyler hates authority. Like Lexi said, she already said it. He's not used to authority. He doesn't like it. He said he likes to be free. He likes to be able to do and say what he wants. 
it's not that he hates and dislikes Lexi's parents. It's not that he's like saying, fuck you guys. It's more so that he doesn't like authority and he doesn't like feeling like he has to be and act a certain way. So he purposely avoids being in their space or being in that space because he feels like when they're around, it's like he has to be a certain way. And he's not used to that. His mom's not like that. And I'm sure he's never, I don't know where his father is, but I'm sure he's never had much of that type of um, structure. Like Lexi's had more of a structure her whole life. She's had both her parents, even though her father's not in her life, but she has had a stepdad and her mom's very involved. And it's more of a structure. Not saying Tyler doesn't have a structure, but you can just tell from watching Tyler's side and Lexi's side, there's more of a family dynamic on Lexi's side than there is Tyler's side. So it's like, He's not used to that and like this this family structure and this, you know, we're authority because we're the parents. It's, it's foreign to him and it feels weird. So he'd rather stay away. Lexi, you can come with me if you follow my rules, but I don't want to be around your family because it's too family oriented and the your parents are too involved because they care. And it's weird to me. That's basically what it is. It's not personal. He's just not used to parents. He's not used to having adults in his life that are authority and are and that are authority trying to help like even as you've seen in other episodes like he looks at Lexi's mom like she's or he looks at Lexi like she's on her mama's titty and he looks at Lexi's mom like she's like purposely trying to keep Lexi to herself because she wants to help her daughter that is under age buy a car because she wants to help her daughter that's under age buy a car because she wants to help her daughter out. She's, you know, Lexi's on her mama's titty and Lexi's mom is like doing too much. It's it's overbearing. So, and even uh, Tyler's mom thought the same thing. So as you can see, Tyler's not used to a family structure and he's not used to authority. He's not used to it. So it's not really personal, it's just foreign to him. And so he doesn't want to be around it. But whether it's personal or not, it's not really healthy. And Lexi needs to realize eventually soon that if she really does want a family, Tyler's not a family man. He's not. You're not going to get him to be the family man. I mean, he might change one day because he is still young. But right now, it's not going to happen. So either you're going to have to deal with the bullshit and just have to deal with this trying to please this man. Or you're going to have to leave him alone and just work on you. And then one day, you'll find somebody that is ready for a family. Or maybe one day Tyler will be a family man. No, it's not happening. But it's not happening. I'm sorry, Lexi. It's just not happening. Tyler's not a family man. And this is he's not used to a family structure. He's not used to authority. It's weird and foreign to him. And you have to think, if he's like this now, how do you think that he's going to be as a father? How is he going to be when he's trying to? you guys are trying to do things together? It, you know, if you, you and I can already see it now. Lexi's going to be the type to try to do Christmas things, holiday fun things. And Tyler's just sitting in the back like, I don't want to do it. And it's going to irritate her. She's going to have to deal with it every year. Like, you you got to read the signs, ladies. You got to check the red flags and read the signs. Like, you know, nobody's perfect. But at the same time, if you got you guys say you want a family and you're, you're trying your hardest to hold on to these relationships so it can be a family, but these men you're trying to hold on to are not family-oriented. Read the signs. All right, so now we're on Jade and Sean. And... Um, I just feel like, I'm gonna be honest, I feel like Sean is lightweight trying to weasel his way back in and he's kind of using Jade. Not using her because he doesn't care about her. He cares about her, but at the same time he's using her. Yeah, I love you and I care about you and the mother of my child, but I'm also using you because I need you right now. You can love someone and still use them. Um, I do. And this is why, this would confirm the fact that I feel like he's using her. When he sat on that porch with her cousin, now we didn't watch the whole episode, these last two episodes, and I know that they cut things out from time to time, and I know, um, you know, things are edited to look a certain way. But for the most part, it seems like from what we see, Jade and Sean got that apartment together, okay? Sean stopped working. Let's, let's just rewind it so you can understand why I feel this way. Jade and Sean got the apartment together when they were pregnant. They had the baby. Towards the end of their relationship, Sean stopped working. He didn't have an income. If I'm correct, he still doesn't have an income. Or if he does have an income, that's great. But he didn't have one for a while. She was working. After she had the baby, she went back to work. 
And that's when they started breaking up and having problems because she felt like she was always working and doing things and he wasn't helping, he wasn't motivating, he wasn't doing anything but playing video games, if I remember correctly. So they broke up. She was working and she stayed in the apartment, took care of the apartment, the baby, and she had the job. He moved out, didn't have a job, didn't have a place to go. Then now he's back, still with no place to go. I don't know if he has a job, but there is no place to go. Him and Jade are not together, but they're still like friends and they're co they're co-parenting they're co-parenting and they're trying to be friends basically they're co-parenting with benefits like they're co-parenting but they're still fucking and she's letting him stay at the house you know because like she said and i believe it and he even said himself he doesn't have a place to go because he said i'm looking for a place i don't have a place he said that multiple times on this episode and before also, she said he doesn't have a place to go. That's why she's been letting him stay there and crash there for a while because he haven't, doesn't have a place to go. She tells her friends that. She tells us, us that. And he says it. So why on the porch do you tell her cousin, like, he goes, he, her cousin asks, well, are you moving back in? You need to get back in here. Because, you know, you can tell that the cousin is kind of rooting for them to get back together, which is understandable. They have a child. Um, and his response is, oh, she wants me to stay here. She does want me to stay here, you know. I don't know. We'll see. I've been staying here a lot of days. <laughs> I've been sleeping over at night. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, we'll see what happens. She wants you. So you, and, and yeah, I mean, I was just going, paraphrasing what he said. He said a little bit more, but that was just paraphrasing. So you mean to tell me you have no place to stay? And you're the one, because I remember correctly, that fucked up the relationship because you were lying about going to look for jobs or going to work when really you were hanging out with your boys getting high. So you were lying about working when you were doing other things. So that's why you guys broke up along with other things and you have no place to go. But you're going to tell y your boy that the reason that you're around is because she wants you there. And <laughs> but she lets me stay the night though. <laughs> like some fuckboy shit. Like that's the shit I'm talking about. Like he's using her. Like he, he wants to get back with her because it's convenient. She's the mother of his child. She's already doing everything anyway. Let me slide in and move back in. I don't got to look for a place. I get my girl back. I get what's familiar back. And yeah, I may have to look for a job, but at least I don't have to put in all the other work to do it by myself. He's using her. Like, let's just be real. He is. Um, yeah, he still has feelings for her, but he doesn't really love her the way she needs to be loved. He is using her. If he really, and he hasn't changed anything. You could just tell by his whole demeanor that he's still exactly the same. He hasn't changed anything. He went to one counseling session, maybe two or three, because we, we don't follow his life. So maybe he did go to a few more, but you could tell he's not changed. It hasn't been that long for him to have changed and he still doesn't have himself together. So why do you guys need to get back together? What would you bring? Nothing. He just wants to get back with her because it's convenient and it's easier for him to slide back in rather than to do what he actually should do which is work on himself go to counseling get his emotions and everything in check make sure he's financially stable and then and actually even get your own place or do what jay's doing and get a, a roommate so that you can have your own and you guys can both be separate and have your own and then you can get back together but you just trying to rush things in is not going to work and i already know jay's going to let him back in because that's what we do as women but it ain't gonna work and he's lightweight just using her. And I don't think he, yeah, no, he knows what he's doing because his response gave me everything. If he would have responded and been like, yeah, we're working on things. No, but his response was, well, she wants me to stay here. She wants you to stay here? <laughs> but I get to sleep over at night still. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're doing. So hopefully things work out. It's going to go to shit again, but we'll see what happens. All right, I'm getting pretty full now. But we're on the last girl, so bear with me. All right, last but not least, Ashley. All right, so drama with her in-laws again. I, I don't know how, I don't know how people live that life when they always arguing and going 
at war with the in-laws. I'm thankful I don't have to deal with that. I pray I never do, but that must be stressful. Hmm. So, all right. So Ashley tells her mom that she made up with Barr's mom, that, you know, everything is cool and they're back cool again. Ashley's mom was not here for it. She was not here for it. No God. She said, I don't care if I'm a pastor, a minister, or an apostle. Okay. When I see the devil, I ain't letting him around me. Okay. And Ashley's mom is convinced. Okay. <laughs> She's convinced that Barr's mom is the devil. She really is. Because pastor, preacher, apostle, whatever you want to call her, whatever she is, she ain't forgiving that lady. <laughs> I, I, she ain't forgiving that lady. I ain't trying to judge. You know, at the end of the day, we're all humans. It doesn't matter if you're a pastor or whatever you are, whatever title you have. At the end of the day, we're all humans. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, I would expect her to da Because, you know, at the end of the day, we're all humans. And she's right. That lady has given that family a lot of drama and chaos for no reason. And I wouldn't want her around my family either. So I understand that. But it's just like, my only thing is, I just... My only thing is, I just would think that Ashley's mom would be a little bit more supportive of Ashley making amends with her in-laws because that's her in-laws. I do understand where Ashley's mom is coming from as far as like, you know, that lady's crazy and she's always doing something. And every time we're cool with her, she goes back to doing some bullshit. And I get that. I do understand that. But at the same time, like I said, pastor or not. But I mean, I would expect you with you being like a pastor or a, she's something. I forgot what the title was, but she's something in the church that's important. I, I want to say she was a pastor, though, or a preacher, something like that. But um, I would just expect you to have a little bit more understanding, knowing that that's her in-law. So they do need to have peace, some type of peace, you know, even if it's like a mutual agreement that I'm not going to speak to you and I'm not going to come around you. But there needs to be some type of agreed peace. So I just would expect her to be a little bit more understanding with that because that is Ashley's in-law. But, you know, it is what it is. I get it too. I mean, like, I wouldn't want nobody like that in my life either. And I would keep them away if I could. So I get it. Uh, oh, excuse me. So she wasn't here for the fact that she made up with her. She was talking to her husband about the fact that she didn't like it. And, um, you know, they had their talk. And then things are supposed to be cool. And then Ashley, now I... Yeah. Okay. So Ashley posts something, making a little joke in reference to the show that was about to air about the fight. And Barr's mom sees it, gets mad, calls Barr and tells him, and then Ashley agrees to take it down. But that wasn't enough. Okay. Ashley, I mean, uh, Barr's mom decides, let me go on social media and do my version of a rant. Okay. And that's what she did. Um, I, it was a little bit less than smart of Ashley to make that post, especially knowing how cuckoo Bar's mom is she's not all the way there and I'm not trying to talk shit like that's just the truth like let's call it what it is when you're even if she was 30 years old acting like this it would still be like what the fuck is wrong with you you're grown as fuck being this immature but the fact that you're 50 plus and you're a grand a mother and grandmother and you're literally verbally and physically attacking a 21 year old girl like you're not all the way there. You're not. Like, that's not even trying to be funny. That's just the truth. Like, not saying she's mentally ill, but chemically, there's something missing. And I'm not trying to be funny. That's just the truth. Either that or she's been through so much drama and trauma in her life that she, her mind cannot wrap around reality and what's right and what's wrong. That's just the truth. Um, and so with that being said... You know, she goes on social media and goes crazy and talks shit about Ashley and stuff. And so then <laughs> Mama T said, you know what? I'm going to go online and get my version. <laughs> so I guess they was going back and forth online. I'm screaming. I don't know. Like the ratchetity of it all. I do feel bad for Ashley and Barb because honestly, at the end of the day, they're both being affected by this. And they're the young ones in the situation and they're the ones actually trying to do better. And they're the ones who actually made Holly. But it's like everybody else is making it hard for them to do better. And I feel bad for them. At the end of the day though, it really is Barr's mom. She's the one who's really fucking everything up. But it's not making it any better by Ashley's mom coming in and, and jumping in the, the bandwagon. So, 
I feel ba bad for Ashley and Barr, but they'll get through it. Barr and Ashley, you're going to probably just have to really just not fuck with Barr's mom for a minute. And then when they do talk to her again, because, like, come on, that is his mom. That is Holly's grandma, uh, grandmother. And I understand, like, I wouldn't want nobody that's down-talking me and who's, like, a toxic person who does horrible, bad things to be around my child either. But at the same time, if that is that my child's grandfather, uh, grandma, I wouldn't say you can never, ever see her ever again in life, but there would be restrictions. Some strict restrictions. So we know they're going to talk again one day because that is her mother-in-law. That's Bart's mom. But when they do talk, Ashley's going to have to make some strict restrictions so that she can go off all the fuck she wants. That's fine. Don't let it phase you, Ashley. But because you got those strict restrictions in place, whatever the fuck she's doing and saying ain't going to fuck up those strict restrictions. And when she goes against those restrictions, bitch, you're restricted, period. And now I really have to just take her away, period, until she's old enough to go see you on her own. Because you couldn't get it together automatically, so I had to restrict you. And even the restrictions weren't enough? Okay, well then you're banned. So, I do feel like Ashley is going to have to try again. and I, Because, I mean, that's just inevitable. That's his, his mom. But, make some strict restrictions. If it gets to a point where you can't even get that together... All right. So we'll see what happens. Strict restrictions. Get it together, lady, because if you don't, you just might have to be banned. Because at the end of the day, you should, yeah, that is the grandma, there should be strict restrictions. But at the end of the day, if you're that bad and that harmful to where it's like you're causing hindrance to other people and nobody feels safe with you, you, you might have to be banned. Because I, I don't care who you are to me. If you're harmful to my child. So it is what it is. So I hope you guys like this video. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to. If you want to see more of these review videos, I'm going to be doing this every week. So go ahead and subscribe so you do not miss out. Um, you know, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe. I will post more videos like this. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I'll hit you back if you want me to. Or if you know, just comment back if you want and I'll comment back. And, um... I'll see you guys very soon. I'm going to finish this breakfast burrito and bye.